Following the death of Uriel and Martin Septim during the Oblivion Crisis, the fate of the Empire is left in High Chancellor Akato's hands, an Ultima who had served the Empire faithfully and diligently all his life. But after assuming regency, none of Akato's decisions seemed competent, and most of his rulings seemed to simply divide the Empire further. This begs the question, was Akato really faithful to the Empire? In link with this idea, there's enough evidence to strongly suggest that Akato was actually a member of the Thalmor and that he purposely weakened the Empire to further the Thalmor's goals. Akato was born in First Hold in the Somerset Isles and has a long and decorated service within the Empire as far as we know. Before being High Chancellor, Okato was the successor to Jaegar Tharn as Imperial Battle Mage. It's important to note that this is an extremely prestigious position, especially considering that Jaegar Tharn was easily one of the best mages Nern had ever seen. The successor to Jaegar would no doubt have to be similarly talented in the magical arts, so it's safe to assume that Okato is a dangerously powerful mage in his own right. However, Okato relinquished his position as Imperial Battle Mage and instead rose to power within the Elder Council and eventually became High Chancellor under Emperor Uriel Septim VII. Some speculate that during this time the Elder Council held significant sway in the running of the Empire, and so it is entirely possible that the events of the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind were triggered by High Chancellor Okato rather than by Uriel Septim VII himself. This is interesting to note, since the events of Morrowind ultimately led to the death of the Tribunal, leaving Morrowind as a province to become greatly weakened. Interestingly, this would have been pretty beneficial for the Thalmor since they regard the Dark Elves with a certain level of disdain, and so weakening a potential future enemy would definitely be in their interest. Some speculate that Okato, who was High Chancellor at the time of the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, covertly persuaded Uriel to pursue the Nereverine prophecy, knowing full well that it could not only have led to the death of Dagothur, but the tribunal as well. But the events of Morrowind aren't the main focus of the video. What is much more crucial to this theory are the actions taken by Okato during the Oblivion Crisis. During the crisis when Okato effectively acted as the Empire's ruler, some very, very poor decisions were made which had a detrimental effect to the Empire. A prime example is the unwillingness of Okato to send the Empire's legions to where they were needed to battle Merun's Dagon's invasion. Instead, Okato held back the majority of the legion's forces in the capital which literally served no purpose, considering the capital wasn't immediately threatened. Akato mentions that if he were to send the legions to places such as Buma or Morrowind, then politically that wouldn't have been very acceptable, since other council members would see that as Akato attempting to solidify his power as potente by sending away loyal soldiers. But surely in such a dire crisis when hundreds of thousands of people's lives are at stake, Okato's political career should be the least of his concerns. Either way, this decision was a poor one for a myriad of reasons. First and foremost, it's made abundantly clear that the only way to combat the Oblivion Gates is to enter them and eradicate their anchor points. It makes next to no sense that Okato thought a reasonable strategy would be to instead defend only the Imperial City, even when there weren't that many Oblivion Gates near it. It fell to House Veduin to combat the Crisis in Morrowind, the Hist in Blackmarsh, and reportedly the Thalmor in the Somerset Isles. It could be said that Okato's unwillingness to dispatch the Legion to provinces that were vulnerable gave rise to the likes of the Thalmor, who only came to power through the Oblivion Crisis. Equally, it's suspicious that Okato's decision ultimately led to three provinces breaking away from the Empire, which is more than the amount that broke away during the Great War. After the Crisis, Alanor broke away under the new Thalmor government, Blackmarsh withdrew under the Anzai and Morrowind became basically fully autonomous despite not formally leaving the Empire. All of this was a direct result of Okato's foolish decision to protect only the Imperial City during the invasion. Additionally, there's the fact that Akato refused to send the Legion to help Martin in Buma, knowing full well Martin was the sole hope to defeat Dagon since he was the only one who could relight the Dragonfires. If Akato had sent some Legionaries to protect and aid the Emperor in Buma, then it is likely the crisis would have come to a close much more quickly. It's almost as if Akato didn't want the crisis to come to an immediate end.
Another point to consider is the suspicious fact that there was a vast host of Mythic Dawn members in the escape passage beneath the Imperial prison. It's pretty clear that such a sizeable force was not there for some arbitrary reason. It's logical to think that someone within the Empire, and in particular someone close to the Emperor, tipped the Mythic Dawn off about the Emperor's escape route. Taking into account what we've discussed before, it could have well been that Akato indirectly let the Mythic Dawn know of the Emperor's escape plan. I should make it clear here that I don't think Okato was interested in power for himself. For example, when Martin came forward, Okato was more than happy to crown him as Emperor. Whether he felt he'd already destabilised the Empire enough during the Oblivion Crisis, they could settle back to just being Battle Mage and watch as Martin suffered the fallout, or he believed he could control him as he had done Uriel, it doesn't appear that Okato ever sought open power. Finally, it's interesting to note that Akato was eventually assassinated by the Thalmor. This might suggest to some that Akato could never have been a Thalmor himself, surely his outstanding service couldn't warrant such a foul end. But if you think about it, Akato had outlived his purpose. He couldn't have made any more atrocious decisions without arousing some form of suspicion, and so it was necessary and beneficial to remove him to create even more strife within the Empire. 